Hi there, this week's topic is colour space and workflow. Now colour space for beginners isn't really something you need to get too concerned with. It's something that only really takes into effect once you get more and more involved in photography, but I'm going to give it a little bit of attention just so you know what we're talking about. What is more important is workflow, because if you establish good habits early on, they'll serve you well for the rest of your career. So let's get stuck in. Now this would probably be as good a time as any to talk about colour space although it's not something I want to go into any detail about because it doesn't really suit beginners. Uh, a colour space is, broadly speaking, a way of mapping and referencing colour within devices like cameras, monitors, screens, etc, etc, etc. Uh, your camera will shoot in an RGB colour space, red, green, blue. Uh, RGB is the same as computer monitors use, phone screens, projectors, etc. When you have printed things, books, magazines, etc, uh, they work in CMYK space, cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, with key being black to give it an actual deep black tone. When you print things, clever bits of software convert the RGB colours to CMYK colours. The exact intricacies of that you really don't need to know, trust me. You're a long way off getting worried about how your full colour management workflow and anything of that sort of guff. But it's worth knowing that your cameras are shooting in an RGB colour space. The two colour spaces you might be able to choose from, if your camera is quite advanced, is sRGB and Adobe 98 RGB. You might possibly come across Profoto RGB, but the first two are far more common. Of those, sRGB is a slightly smaller colour space. It actually represents a, a smaller cross-section of the colours you can see. That means it often looks a bit punchier because it ends up being more contrasty. Adobe 98, by comparison, actually takes in a slightly wider range of colours. So initially it might look a bit flatter and a bit less contrasty. However, think back to what we already know about things like contrast and information, resolution and all the rest. We know that as a rule, you're better off capturing more information at the time so that later on you can choose to discard information than starting off with less information and then finding later on that you need more and having to interpolate and add information that's not there. So if your camera offers it, Shoot in Adobe 98, get into a good workflow with your RAW files, you'll start to produce incredibly high quality images. If your camera doesn't seem to give you the option, just don't worry about colour space. The odds are that means your camera is shooting in sRGB. I can assure you, you will be absolutely fine for years and years and years until you start to get to a really precise colour managed workflow. But by that time, you'll probably have spent a fortune on all sorts of kit. I just wouldn't worry about it too much. Sort of thing though, you might want to know because it'll be buried deep in your camera settings and one day you might come across it and think, what on earth is this? Or why is this print looking a funny colour? If it's any consolation, uh, when I send my work off to printers all the time, I still get discrepancies between the colours that I see on my monitors, in my cameras, and what gets printed because colour management is an absolute minefield. Hence why I'm not going into too much detail right here. I'm going to wrap this section up by talking about workflow. Workflow is a terribly clever management consultant sounding word that makes you sound really smart. I use it all the time as a consequence because it makes me feel important. Uh, now, no matter whether you are an experienced jaded professional like myself or you're an amateur just starting out, it's still important to think about your workflow. What it means in photographic terms is how the images you create go from being captured on the camera through to their final destination, whether that destination be prints you make to hang at home, images you post on Facebook or stuff that ends up in books and magazines. It's all part of your workflow. It also means how you look after those images, where they're kept, how they're archived, how they're backed up. So it's quite important, as you can imagine, even if all you're doing is taking snaps and posting them on Facebook. Workflow is a huge topic. As this is a beginner's guide, as it's often been the case, I'm not going to go into too much depth, but here are three really important golden rules. Rule one, always keep your master original files. Now, whether that was a JPEG off the camera or a RAW, always keep that original. You may well take those originals and you might make some low-res copies that you then make black and white and you post them all on Facebook and you think, I'm done now, I've posted the stuff I want on Facebook, I'll get rid of my original files. And then two months later you think, oh, I need those original files again, I need the original ones that have still got the colour on them that are at high resolution. Oh, I deleted them. Storage space isn't really an issue these days, it shouldn't be. So always keep the originals because then you can do all sorts of clever different versions and black and white ones, smaller ones, mucking about with colour filters and things, but you've always got the original to fall back on. 
okay? And don't overwrite the original. Make copies of things. Hopefully, you know, you can use computers at a basic level. You don't keep saving over the same document. Make copies of things. Don't affect the original. Rule two would be decide on some sort of naming convention, both for your files and for your folders. The way you choose to name your files is totally up to you. Uh, I tend to name mine based on my jobs because I'm shooting jobs all the time and it's much easier for me to refer back to them that way. Start with something like such and such a number, original, such and such a number, low res, whatever it might be. And try and name your folders in a similar way. You'll find that lots of uh, software these days, such as raw conversion software, will allow you to create automatically subfolders beneath the stuff you're working on. So you can instantly create a low resolution folder, a high resolution folder, whatever it might be. Once you've got a convention, try and stick to it because you won't believe how many images you'll start to accumulate. And as time passes, try to find a certain thing, try to work out which copy is which, gets more and more and more of a headache. But if you know that you always call high resolution ones something something underscore H, you know you're on the right track. It's worth an awful lot of pain saved further down the line. And the last rule, which finger am I on? This finger, that finger, is always back things up. Hopefully, as somebody who I'm guessing uses computers, you use a laptop, desktop, whatever it might be, at work or at home, you understand the importance of backing important things up. Even your holiday snaps matter, let alone somebody like me whose photography is their living. And obviously I back things up very, very thoroughly. There is no excuse not to back things up. I would suggest, obviously, you back up your original files, your master files, but I'd also suggest you back up the different versions you make, simply because you don't know what can go wrong. Uh, I hope you haven't suffered from serious computer crashes. I've had my fair share over the years. I've had my fair share of hard, hard drive failures, system crashes, you name it. And once or twice, I have actually genuinely lost images. Nowadays, I'm extremely thorough about backing up for obvious reasons. It is a case of once bitten, twice shy. Things like this are very inexpensive, really. That's one terabyte, that's about 50 pounds. In terms of work, that will last me four or five months. And I back my work up to one of these, I back it up to a big RAID array in my office. I'm not going to talk about RAID in any detail. And I back everything up to cloud storage as well. So my stuff exists in three places, right? Now, I'm not suggesting you have to go that far, but I really would suggest you don't just leave images just on your computer's hard drive and only there. And don't just leave them, say, on Facebook because who knows, they may well disappear. Facebook might decide they want to keep them. Buy one of these or several of these and always back stuff up to them. Okay, there you go. Now, as I've stressed, don't get too hung up on colour space. It's really not that big an issue at the start of your career in photography, but workflow is much more important. Get those good habits in place and they'll last you for the rest of your life. That's it for now. Uh, another video coming next week. Uh, this is part of the bigger technical fundamentals course that I've put together to give you an entire grounding in the basics of photography. Hit like if you like what I'm doing, subscribe, etc, etc, etc. You know how it works and I'll see you soon.